What does it take to have true pro tone? Today, <laughs> we talked to the man himself, AJ Rodriguez of Jordan Felice fame. What is up? So guys, let me tell you a little bit about AJ Rodriguez. First off, he's an incredible guitar player, tone master, plays with Jordan Felice, who in my mind is arguably one of the hardest acts in contemporary Christian music today. And AJ has poured his life and his soul into this gig. Everything you see on this board is completely MIDI patched. He doesn't have to touch anything except for a few things. And let me just tell you, this is like the 99th percentile of like extreme things that you do to a board to get it ready for tour, and it sounds incredible. We're gonna go through AJ's rig rundown. What does he play? Guitar to amp to pedals. We're gonna show you guys all of it, only because a lot of times, from me, like, I've got a pedal board, and it's cool, like it works, it gets the job done for 80% of my gigs, but this is a true touring, professional grade pedal board built and played by the man himself. Dude. Let's Thanks, do this. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm stoked. Yes. Yeah, so- Tell us about your guitar, man. It's obviously yeah. it's, it's so, a gorgeous looking telly. So this is actually a really cool story. Um, years ago, I had a bunch of friends chip in to help me get this guitar. I custom designed it with the builder of this company. His name's Gilmore, um, and the company's named Gilmore too. It's out of South Korea. They're they're custom builders. They make amazing stuff. Um, and this guitar is just I've been through it with this guitar. We you know played the heck out of it. It's got scratches and battle scars all over it. Um, but it's special because a lot of my friends helped me get it. So amazing for that. You know it's just got a ton of sentimental value. It's it's got a couple weird things for a telly. Um, it has 24 frets, but no dots on the 24th fret. Okay. Uh, it's a two-point trim, which you don't usually see on tellies. Um, HH setup, but I can split the neck pickup. Um, and this is a Lindy Freeland unbucker, so when I split it, you don't lose volume on the split coil, which is huge. Um, I can also split the back pickup, but I, I don't generally. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that tone. Is, there, is this ebony? Yeah. It's, Ebony. It, it looks gorgeous, man. Yeah, thanks, man. And and it's 16 inch radius, so it's as flat as possible all the way across the neck. Um, so this was their custom neck design. The the feel of it. It's uh, it's honestly one of the most comfortable necks I've ever played. The only thing that rivals the comfortability of this neck is an Ibanez AZ. And I know that's not a CCM guitar, but I would 100% play one in the future, um, you know, depending on the budget. But um, I also put these little fret dots on because some stages are incredibly dark. So there was one show, actually, where I was on stage... And the lights were just completely off. It was the intro of the show. And I'm sitting there like this, like trying to find where my hands go on the fretboard. AJ, I want to know, like, what is the philosophy you have when you go to approach preparing your tones for a pro touring run? Yeah, so... Um, I'm always thinking like ease with everything. So if I am getting patch changes from the MD or from Ableton, whether I'm running it or someone else is running it, then, um, I am utilizing that. So that way my whole board switches by itself without me having to touch it. So explain that a little bit more to someone who's maybe a bit new to guitar. How does, how does patch changing in the moment on your board help you as a player yeah. in comfortability? Well, I'm not tap dancing. So I can control everything on the board myself. Like I can go into these pages and kind of turn on and off whatever I want. Um, but what I do is I go in and make presets. So 
like if you kind of if you look as I'm switching through even the presets on this song, it's changing you know delays, it's changing effects um, as I'm just pressing through. And what MIDI does is it selects the presets and the songs for me, so I don't even have to do that. Getting into the MIDI world, yeah, right. Obviously, it's a big step for a lot of guitar players, right? Because we're tap dancing, we're trying to keep costs low, yeah. But MIDI is a huge upgrade into this world. Yeah. What is a great way for players to move into the MIDI world without maybe breaking the bank? Dude, that's a great idea. Um, so the HX Stomp is probably like if I was if I was talking to a guitar player who hadn't bought anything, they're buying their first pedal. I would recommend the HX Stomp because it can do everything, right? It doesn't do some things very well, but it can do everything. And you can get the HX Stomp to send MIDI or receive MIDI from things too. So if you're trying to dive into that world, HX Stomp's a great place to start. And it, it's a, there's a learning curve to it. So sometimes you just got to embrace the learning curve. Sure. You know, you got to like do what it takes to get your your brain around things and then begin to implement them ask people questions. When I was programming the RJM, and one of the main reasons why I go with RJM is because they're extremely responsive. So when I first got an RJM switcher, I had no idea what I was doing, right? I was just kind of reading through the manual, changing stuff, seeing what happened, just testing stuff. And it was honestly kind of miserable. Like it was, it was a, it's a learning curve like I'm talking about. Um, but when I reached out to RJM, asked them questions, they were super responsive, like same day getting back to me with the questions that I had. And that's one of the main reasons why I stick with the RJM stuff. what you're playing on the road on a regular basis and we'll go through each of your pedals and kind of explain why you use it over yeah. maybe something else in the same line. Cool, cool, cool. What I do, what I just did is I went into my um, RJM, I turned off all drives and I've got a short reverb on, no delay, and I just want to hear what that direct amp tone sounds like. So this is no pedals on, basically. <laughs> Okay, so that's that. I would then go change the amp around, EQ things, move the mic around. We already did that, so I don't have to do that now. Sure. Um, then I would layer in each pedal. Um, so one pedal that I really love, it's become a staple on my rig, is the Secret Pre by um, Chase Tone. So that is an always on pedal for me. So I just threw that on, this is the difference. <laughs> Everything sounds better with that pedal on. It's kind of crazy. So um, Secret Pre is always on for me. Um, then I would check how my rhythm tone sounds. So my rhythm tone is this Tim Pierce right here. And we already kind of heard the tones earlier, so it's already dialed in. Like, oh, rhythm tone's good. Okay, let me check my like light gain lead tone. So cool, I've got a lead tone, which is this Cold War drive. I'll check how that sounds. Sick. And then I've also got a boost pedal that I'll just throw on on top of pedals. So that's with it on, kind of adds quite a bit of boost. On. Um, and that one, I just throw on top of any of those other three pedals that you heard. Tell us a bit more about your time-based effects, your reverbs, your delays. How do you dial in reverbs and delays, and those time-based effects, for a live sound situation? Yeah, totally. Um, so probably one of my favorite things about the rig right now is this wetter box. 
And um, basically what I do with reverbs and delays is I have them in kill dry. Um, and so this is going to get super nerdy, but my rig, it has the dry signal and the wet signal get to the amp at the exact same time. Okay. So think about it this way. So I've got, if my stereo dry and my stereo wet were like just on top of each other and they both hit the amp at the exact same time, that's kind of like, that's kind of what's going on. Gotcha. But my wet signal is in kill dry, so none of the dry signal gets through that. So yeah, so then what I do there is with this wetter box, I can actually dial in the mix of the reverb and the delay on the fly. So um, with it, this, these buttons right here, so uh, I've got them marked to where I like them, where they sound good to me, but if sometimes if I'm going through some amps um, in stereo, they just cut through a little more, the reverb can cut through depending on how I'm running the rig. Um, and I can just dial them to taste. And then I can also I can also just access my different levels of delay and reverb on the fly with the RJM. So this is my short reverb. Medium. Long. And then I've got ambient. Uh, and then I've got a swell. And the swell kills the dry signal. Because remember how I was saying the dry and the wet get to the amp at the same time? When I go to the swell setting, it turns off the dry signal, and now we've just got reverb. Um, so my main amp right now is a Sir Badger 18, okay. and nice. um, I actually endorse Sir, Sir amps. Um, maybe guitars. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, you know, saving up to maybe buy a guitar. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm um, still up in the air on that one, but definitely amps. So uh, I have the Sir Badger 18. I actually have a Sir Bella and a Cab on the way um, that I'm really excited about, and uh, I try to use amps as much as possible. When I can't use amps, I'm plugging into the UA Dream. Yeah, it was great. I actually sold my Iridium and bought the Dream with the money that I Very sold nice. the Iridium for. So um, it was a great flip. And I feel like the Dream sounds a little more hi-fi. Sure. I, I like the way that it feels and sounds better um, as a direct solution. And as a disclaimer, I've tried all the direct stuff. So before this rig, I was full Kemper. I've been full Axe Effects before. Um, I just kind of settled on, I, I think amps feel more alive, they have more complexity to them, and I just like the way they sound better. So I try to do amps as much as possible. When I can't do amps, I'll go into the dream. AJ, if we want to find out more about you, how you play, where can we reach you or contact you? Yeah, definitely. So I'm probably most active on my Instagram. Uh, it's just at a period j period Rodriguez, and that's with a Q instead of a G, so R-O-D-R-I-Q-U-E-Z. You could even flash it on the screen if possible. Right, and we'll, we'll make Probably sure you easiest. guys have a link in the description yeah. for his Instagram. And also, if you want to find AJ on YouTube, you can find that in the description as well yeah. below. I'm also starting TikTok. You'll see some cool like tour okay. vlog type stuff on TikTok. And guys, just, just low key, AJ is one of the most approachable guys you could ever meet in regards to any questions related to guitar. If you guys have any questions for AJ, let me know down in the comments below. If you see the Jordan show and you come to it, come talk to me after. Like if you saw this video and you want to come ask me some questions or whatever after the show, feel free. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Guys, we want to thank you so much for tuning in to this professional rig rundown with the man himself, AJ Rodriguez. Thanks, bro. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, man. Um, Thanks for having me. I'm going to have AJ on some more. We're going to have some of his friends on some more. But guys, listen, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to have more content here. And if you have any questions, once again, get me down below the comments. Have a great day, guys, and we'll see you next time on iGuitar. guitar. <laughs>